I Said Majid Tafreshi. He's the deputy for international affairs at Iran's High Council for Human Rights. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Now, um, this weekend, we're going to see the deadline for European nations to sort of come up with a solution for Iran to sell its oil abroad in the aftermath of these escalating tensions because of the U.S. sanctions. What do you make of Iranian officials sort of ratcheting up the pressure, not only with what I just read about the foreign minister's statement, but also from the Iranian president? Thank you so much. Actually, what's happening for Iranian oil tanker is exactly what we can call it the period style. I mean, position that's done first by United Kingdom, unfortunately. And you can find up lots of illegal acts, as you may have aware and distinguished viewers of this program, is that uh, international law has its own obligation in the field of the law seas. But unfortunately, what happened for Iranian tanker is totally illegal and was totally illegal in, like, as I said, a period, uh, I mean, shaped situation. And what we expect that now the international court, I mean, the Hamburg, we will follow definitely this case. But in my information, this uh, ship now is with the Iranian flag. And nobody can, uh, you know, uh, do anything wrong against this ship because it's totally uh, legal uh, shipment based on international law. And as you may aware, this disrupting the law of sea, unfortunately, many years ago in 1982, happened by the United States that you know violated international law uh, in the I mean uh, 1982 law of seas that uh, okay. under, under if I don't be wrong underwater cultural heritage one is one of was one of the excuses and after that they produced PSI proliferation security initiative that these kinds of activities is totally wrong and the responsibility of the state don't let you follow this very gang style position. Okay, so let me just sort of shift gears uh, uh, with you for just a second. Let's talk to uh, you about, if you could just give us a better t a sense of what life is like in Tehran and across the city, uh, the country rather, after these, uh, the, the imposition, uh, U.S. imposing heavier economic sanctions, how are the people being affected? This sanction, of course, bothering our country. This sanction is not limited in the last four decades, but it's, as you may have already started in 1953, when they copped Iranian, I mean, legal government, Mohammad Mossadegh. After that time, uh, the hostility of Americans, I mean, continues against Iranian. If I want to give quota to Iranian hostel, maybe number one, the gold medal goes to the American, and the second one, the silver medal nowadays go to the Britain. But this hostility in the last two centuries always was against the Iranians. And unfortunately, nowadays, after the revolution, we see that uh, this, uh, the method of this hostility developed a lot. But what we learn from our history is resistance and, you know, stopping the hegemon policies. Now we are number one in the level of universities, number one in many subjects in the science. But, of course, we have lots of difficulties. But Iranian understood that it's not the fault of government, but barbaric sanction, illegal yeah. sanction, unilateral sanction that against international law is running day by day by Americans. And Iran is not exemption here. You can find lots of sanction against lots of other countries by Americans, for example, the Cuba is one of them, that mm -hmm. 989 countries are against the United States, but United States stand, uni I mean, just one country in the front of all uni universe and ask, uh, don't, I mean, uh, give the positive answer to the request of international community. All right, Said Majid Tafrashi, thank you very much for joining us live from Tehran.